Kevin Frankie, the uh, ex or estranged husband of Ruby Frankie, speaking out about what went on in their relationship together while they were together, while they were separated, and uh, Jody Hildebrandt's involvement in their relationship. Uh, joining me to uh, discuss, Robin Dreek, retired FBI special agent. Big data dump just the other day, interviews, uh, audio, uh, diaries. I mean, it, it goes on and on and on. And we saw a very interesting Kevin Frankie uh, being deposed and questioned by police very early on in the investigation. Uh, and and he seemed to be fairly clueless as to the depths of what the hell was happening at uh, Jody Hildebrandt's home. Uh, I guess the first question is, do you buy it? Do you think he really, truly was that clueless that he appeared on camera? Uh, boy, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah. The only thing that strikes me of this entire thing is the Hildebrandt cult that yeah. she started. She found the victim in Ruby, and they formed an anti-male cult from what it sounds like, as uh, as Frankie was saying. Mm -hmm. And it just, it again, when you're looking at this behavior pattern of really unhealthy behavior that manifested eventually in the abuse of the children, it, it just didn't happen from zero to 100 overnight. There's a there's an escalation of really strange, unhealthy behaviors that was happening between Frankie and Hildebrand. And and the the husband was, boy, you use that word victim. He's a victim of it as well. But you were hoping that as a father, he'd be able to do more than he was able to do as well. So Well, what was it's, shocking it's a, to, to me about a lot of it is that there was no – separation agreement there was nothing legally stopping him from going and seeing his kids when she took them away right he he seems to just go off of the story of well we made this verbal agreement and i thought the only way i get to see them again is if if i stay on jody's good side and i'm paraphrasing um and and then that's the way to do it i mean that's not the way to do it i mean you're dealing with someone who's not really mentally that well and i think kevin may be in that camp as well um and and you're not going to go after seeing your i mean you have rights you can bring an attorney into this to to have visitation rights, but he seemed to very much just kind of cower to Ruby very early on. Like, well, you want to do this? You do that. Okay. Maybe I'll get back in your good graces someday. It just seemed really bizarre to allow your children to go off in that sort of a manner without, I don't know, much of a care. So it's interesting, you know, our phraseology we have here. You're right. To you and I and people that are dealing with healthy relationships – it's completely bizarre, but here's some conjecture in here. Remember, Hildebrandt was recommended as his counselor by their church. Mm -hmm. I think the church is playing a large role in here in their in their sect of it because when you have a group thing going on and and you are the one person say say you're the husband say you're the father and you're now surrounded by a tribe of people that are saying you're the bad apple you're the bad egg and then you have the charismatic Hildebrand as a cult leader you know, that's kind of leading the charge against you and your behavior and what you're doing. You don't even think in legal terms. You think in terms of this is what this entire collective is saying. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of brainwashing going involved in, when you're dealing with those types of unhealthy behavior. I don't know if he was even potentially cognating that he actually had legal action because he's so thinking that I don't have any action because this is what the group is saying I can mm -hmm. and can't do. So I think it might have just been a and we've seen this before. I mean, group think is a very, yeah. very powerful influence of our behavior. And I think we keep focusing on Hildebrand and Frankie on, on this one. But I think there's a network around them that was supporting the behaviors they had, because otherwise, you're right. You only have two crazy people that are bruising their children. Why didn't someone else step in? Well, because generally people don't step in when the, everyone around them is, I wouldn't say complacent, but they're 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 aware of it and they're they're taking sides and yeah. when and when the husband doesn't have a side that's on his side he feels disempowered yeah i mean it's like not seeing the forest through the trees i mean it's all right there in front of him but he's just yep. he, he's so stuck over here like well, this is my only option this is the, yeah so i i can i mean it, it is you see that in abusive behaviors uh, abusive relationships and such it just it happened in that sort of dynamic what did you make of, uh, I mean, and this is what kind of puts everything into question for me of, of anything he's saying. Uh, he literally said, I can't explain some of the stuff that happened while we were there. We're talking paranormal stuff here. We're talking like ghostly yep. stuff. And he's claiming this as fact uh, of, of plates uh, 
flying off of the shelves and smashing against the wall at full speed, hearing crashing sounds from the basement while they were upstairs. I mean, it sounds crazy. I mean, it it, it just, it really does. It, it, this is, we're, we're getting into ghostly territory here on a very serious case of child abuse. And I, I'm sorry, it's like there's, there's rooms for that, but I don't know that this is one of them. Why go there with that? Or, or does he really believe that these sort of things were happening? I mean, or, or were they happening? <laughs> he believed it enough not to take action. Yeah. I mean, so he's, if he, whether by rationalizing his inaction today or by his fear of that action of what he thought he saw then, regardless, it kept him from taking action that was in his children's best interest. And, <laughs> And what's all this say? Well, there's a lot of unhealthy crazy going on there. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess if you're thinking that is happening legitimately, there's a lot of things you can you can rationalize in this. Um, the, fear, fear is one of the greatest motivators yeah. of human beings. You know, yeah. when you fear for your safety, you fear for you fear the actions you're going to take because you fear reciprocity for those actions. You're not then thinking that if I just take one, st- like you said, the forest through the trees, if I just take one step outside this forest, just one step here, the fog clears and I have clarity and I can do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. But he get, became so engrossed, whether by design of Hildebrandt's or because he legitimately is a little nutso himself, excuse yeah. my, you know, my, my vernacular, <laughs> but <laughs> it keeps you from taking those actions that are in the best interest of the children. Yeah. And then he certainly did not. And in the end, was shocked when the children were not allowed to go back with him. Uh, just a, yeah. a bizarre, bizarre case all around it with a lot of undertones, scarily, uh, of, uh, almost, uh, Daybell, uh, and, and Valo. If you listen to some of those phone calls, uh, huh. between, uh, Kevin and Ruby and, and other individuals who have been unidentified in some of those phone calls, uh, you have a, an extreme belief system that goes kind of back to the zombies uh, where they were, where the day bell where Lori Vallow day bell was talking about the kids being zombies. You were a step away from them. God knows what else was going to happen, but they were saying and thinking the kids are possessed or evil spirits. And then we got to get them out through these horrible, horrible means. And they were well into the process of doing it. So here's, I'm not a cult expert, but I, I, we, from the cases you and I have yeah. covered, I've read a, a decent amount about them. Yeah. And so here's some elements, and this is why you said it relate you know, has similar undertones as Daybell, because Daybell was cult-ish. Mm-hmm. And so is this. And here's why. Here's things that you need for the definition of a cult. You need a charismatic leader at the front of it that is the, the, the energy behind it. We have that. Hildebrandt and Lori Daybell herself. Two, you need cloistered people that are not allowed outside contact or limited outside contact. So you can keep the only information float they get about how to interact with the world Mm -hmm. is very controlled. That's happened in both those cases. Three do harm to others. In other words, they benefit from doing harm to others. Both those cases, exactly the same financial gain by their actions. Yep, got to have that there as well. And then there's also a sexual nuance or undertone in these cases as well. And what we're seeing from some of the, we're not having claims of it, but some of the the weirdness between Hildebrandt and mm-hmm. Jody, um, I, you know, I mean, and uh, Frankie, just there, there's there's a lot of strangeness there. So we're hitting on all the on all the peaks here of potential cult activity, cult like activity. Which generally becomes extreme. I've, I, we've seen people all over the place that are completely healthy, normal people living out normal, healthy lives that become victims of this kind of mentality because they they start out with exactly what we've seen in both those cases: love bombing. Mm-hmm. And then once you get love bombed and you get sucked into the love bomb, well, then we start having a little bit of trauma bonding going on that we talked about. Yeah. And so I think that's what we saw. We saw a, a love bombing. We saw a grooming from a cult like figure in both those cases, both Daybell and Hildebrand. Again, my my YouTube commando hat on right there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they have all the ingredients, and they uh, yeah, I just they it, do. It's scary to think about what could have happened had they not been stopped uh, where they were. Uh, very true. Yeah, very last true. half full on it could have been it was as horrendous as what happened, but I think you're right. It could have if it left to its own devices without anything else happening, it could have gone much worse. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, 
subscribe and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.